Hello and welcome to the Retro Gamer Show. But James, it's not any Retro Gamer Show. It's the 20th. Coming up on this episode of the Retro Gamer Show. It's been away for a while, but it's back. It's Games Chart Flashback. We take a look at a new retro-inspired game that's not only available for some of our favorite retro consoles, but for today's consoles as well. In What's On, we take a look at what retro gaming events are on this December, and also which ones have been confirmed so far for next year. We also tell you what games we've been playing since the last episode. So all in all, it's going to be an episode that's going to make Doc say... Great Scott! Well, to start off this episode of the Retro Gamer Show, there are a few people, not just us celebrating hitting 20 episodes, but there's a few people that we're fans of that are celebrating too. First up, the Retro Hour podcast. So Dan, Ravi and Joe, they've hit 200 episodes. Yeah, and that is no mean feat because they do that every week, don't they? So every Friday, great podcast if you don't listen to it and... Uh, you ought to really uh, get yourself after you've watched this go and listen to it and i listen to it on youtube and, uh, i've listened to it on my phone through the car yes yeah, so. um so it sounds fantastic they've got an interview every week um do check them out retro hour just search for them you'll find them no problem at all they're on all every podcast client you can ever imagine that's right yeah so it's definitely worth checking out and uh someone else uh, or another team that have recently got to 200 and that's retro gamer magazine so congratulations to them Again, no mean feat, 200 issues of the Retro Gamer magazine. And uh, this is a, a really good issue if you haven't sort of got hold of it. I know they've gone to the next issue, they're already on the 201. Uh, but this one's really good. It goes through, go through the decades, looking at all the different uh, eras of uh, computing and video games and gaming. And that's uh, definitely worth picking up. And also you get... And it's got this, freebies. Yeah, free calendar. Who doesn't love freebies? Free calendar. The calendar's with the new one, sorry. The free poster. This is the front cover and it's very very impressive there's yeah. a map of a game that's coming out soon as well on the back so if you want to change it around like you used to when you had uh, your wham posters on the wall <laughs> and also there's a turrican music cd which is also very cool so chris holsbeck yeah so it's always uh, nice to get some freebies with your magazine so let's say this is the last issue uh, the new issue is already out the one ready for christmas it's got a free calendar with it as well so uh if you don't already, it's definitely worth checking out the Retro Gamer magazine. They're doing a great job these days. Uh, so keep up the good work, guys. So anyway, uh, that's it. We're on to the 20 as well, 20th episode. So uh, there's, they've obviously been going a bit longer than this to get to 200. But, um, <laughs> but we're monthly. And uh, yeah, so 20 episodes again. It's uh, been a bit... I didn't think we'd be going that long, did you, when we started doing these? Yeah, I thought you we'd did? be, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Well. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> it's been away for a while, it's had a little bit of a break, but it's back, it's time for this month's Games Chart Flashback. For this Games Chart Flashback, we're going back to a time when if you went to the cinema, you might have watched Emilio Estevez in The Mighty Ducks. Steven Seagal in Under Siege. I'd watch it right back. We still have a week together. I guess that means I won't get to see you go through puberty. <laughs> or maybe Army of Darkness. See this? This is my boomstick! It's a 12 gauge double barreled Remington. S Mart's top of the line. You can find this in the sporting goods department. And this was riding high in the UK singles chart.
Yes, we're taking you back to October of 1992 and we're going to check out the Commodore Amiga chart. At number 5 it was the sequel to Monkey Island, Lee Chuck's Revenge. And surely everyone must remember these dancing skeletons. Well, if you recognise this tune, leave us a comment and let us know what it's called. At four, it was Sid Meier's Civilization. Now this is one of those games that's much better and much more exciting to play than what it is to actually sit and watch. Did you know that in 1999 Sid Meier became the second person to be inducted into the Academy of Interactive Arts and Scientists Hall of Fame? The first to receive that honour was Nintendo Shigeru Miyamoto. And at number three, it had to be in here somewhere, it's Sensible Soccer. For those of you who remember the great Amiga Power magazine, cover disc number 21 had a demo. It was called Sensible Soccer England vs Germany. It was also known as Sensible Soccer meets Bulldog Blighty. This featured a mode of play that involved replacing players with soldiers from the game Cannon Fodder and the ball with a hand grenade. The grenade would randomly begin to flash and eventually explode, killing any nearby players. At 2, it was the Games 92 from Ocean. Now this game was made to celebrate the Olympic Games of 1992. And I must admit that running doesn't look all that exciting. But maybe swimming will be better. Maybe not. And at number one, it's Eye of the Beholder 2. The game was developed by Westwood Associates, who later went on to do all the Command and Conquer games. The game used a modified version of the first game's engine and it added outdoor areas and greatly increased the amount of interaction the player had with their environment. It's not really our cup of tea, but it did make number one. So that was a look at the games on the Amiga from October 1992. And if you ask me, a bit of a mixed bag. Yeah, there's a couple of classics there, like Sensible mm. Soccer and uh, Monkey Orient 2, two great games. Uh, Civilization, I didn't play much, never really got into that, but I know a lot of people do like that. And of course, number one was Eye of the Beholder 2, again, another game that I never played much, did you? No. no. But I know Probably there are not. lots of fans out there for those sort of games. And uh, I don't know what the hell that was, though, at number two, the uh, Games 92. The Spanner. Spanner yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the Spanish Olympics, obviously, that year. And uh, it looked a bit guff. Yeah, very slow, wasn't it? I mean, I don't mm. know. It was, it was promotion as well. Normally, do quite good titles, don't they? So maybe it's good. Maybe, but I never, I don't remember seeing it back in the day or playing it. No. So, anyway, so anyway, moving on, and uh, now everyone's been talking about it. Everyone's been playing it, so we thought we might as well take a look at it ourselves. So yes, Xeno Crisis has been released on various formats by Bitmap Bureau. It's available as a download from Steam and the Nintendo Switch Store. 
and on the Bitmap Bureau website you can buy and download ROMs or even order physical versions for the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis and the Sega Dreamcast. The closest thing we can think of to compare Xeno Crisis 2 is the classic Smash TV, which hit the arcades and was ported over to our home computers and consoles way back in the early 90s. So as the game's blurb says, Xeno Crisis is an arena shooter that can be played solo or in local co-op mode. You take control of a battle-hardened marine embarking on a deadly mission to confront an alien menace and get home alive. Run and gun your way through thousands of adversaries as you explore the devastated research outpost, searching for survivors and ultimately facing the origin of the outpost's demise. The game is divided into seven distinct levels, each being randomly generated each time you play, meaning that no two playthroughs are the same. As you play there are several special weapons that you can pick up from time to time, each with their own characteristics. Although your standard issue pulse rifle is perfectly capable of taking on the enemy, other weapons can give you advantages in certain situations, so picking them up is generally advisable. Once you have picked up a special weapon though, it only lasts for a short amount of time, so it's best to get and use it quickly. As you progress through the game you will come across many different enemies, each with their own traits and means of attack. Many of them can be gunned down without too much thought, but others will require you to outflank them or attack them within a certain time window. At the end of each level you will of course have to kill a big boss before you can continue to the next. In between levels you will be given the chance to exchange any dog tags that you've collected from vanquished enemies for upgrades ranging from extra health to weapon power ups to extra continues. We found Xeno Crisis a blast to play in both single and two player modes. The controls take a bit of getting used to at first, but work well once you have, and the graphics do a great job of portraying a retro shooter. This however is not an easy game and we found ourselves like others having to drop the difficulty level down too easy, and we still have only got as far as level 3. But you will find that Xeno Crisis definitely has a charm to it that will keep you coming back for more and with the game's levels being randomly generated each playthrough, you will never feel like you're playing the same game over and over again. Add into the mix the game's great soundtrack and you've definitely got a game that gets a double thumbs up from us. So there you go, Xeno Crisis there, and uh, we've been really enjoying playing that, haven't we? It's been a, it's been a blast to play, as we say. Um, yeah, we have hammered that for a couple of hours yeah, the other day. So yeah, we um, got on that, and uh, it's very addictive, isn't it? Mm. You just want to keep going back for more, even though it's, it really, really is hard, isn't it? I find it, and I think I said in the sort of like the commentary there that we got to level three, but I have actually since playing on my own got to level four. So, uh, but like I say, it's uh, not an easy game. First thing you want to do is get the settings down too easy, because when you get it, it's on hard. Um, so yeah, really been enjoying that. And uh, what else have you been been sort of playing lately, then, James? Well, retro fans, you might want to put your fingers in your ears for a second. But I've been playing Call of Duty, the new one, Modern Warfare. All right. So I suppose the, it's got retro roots almost. Yeah. Isn't it? The I, first uh, one's probably I, getting on a bit now. I've, I've skipped not it quite for retro. a little while. Um, you know this modern stuff where they're da jump dancing around walls and <laughs> stuff like that. You know, I'm, I've not. And of course, go on multiplayer and you just get annihilated within mm. seconds because I'm too old and crap. Um, but no, I've been playing the special ops on that. So if you remember the old original Modern Warfare, yeah. um, where you had there was loads of great missions on special ops, and there was one. My favourite was um, 
one where you sort of storm a cabin in a woods. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. They and then you, you, once you killed a certain amount of people, depending on where you were, or whatever, then it would fire off juggernauts. Do you remember them? So big, yeah. big like guys in mega armor listening yeah. to you know I remember heavy one, metal. There's one where I used to put it into two player mode. And keep one player hanging back, oh, be yes. able to two joysticks, and uh, two controllers. And I used to go off in and try yeah. and beat them on my own. It used to be really hard. It was so much fun, that Special Ops mission on the original. Loved yeah. it. You would just, you know, you'd be online, you get two or three people, and the, the, there's loads of pressure, because you didn't want to be the one that screwed up. And as soon as you heard the music change, the, and the, you know the juggernaut's coming. Yeah. And I think there's three in total that you had to kill, two or three. But anyway... Love that. So I bought it because I heard Special Ops is back in the new one. So uh, everyone will know, or most people know that follow the modern stuff. It's got a horrific download as soon as you 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 uh, put it in. It's something like 70 gig in four parts, and then there was another like five, 10 gig download the other day. So unfortunately, it's horrific when you're installing it. This is on Xbox One. I imagine it's probably similar for. PlayStation players, but um, yeah, so don't um, don't plan on playing it the day you get it. So if you know someone that's getting it for Christmas, then you might want to get them to install it first because you know it's going to annoy a lot of people having to wait a day to play. It. I know I got quite quick quite quick internet at home, but I had to leave it overnight. Mm, is it good though when you actually get playing? Oh yeah, it? brilliant. So yeah, Special Ops is back. You can go online and play with uh, three other people, so a team of four. There's um, start off with just four special op special ops missions. They've added another two already, um, and they are just as fun. I always find when I'm playing those games, I'm not very good. I always seem to shoot all the way around, mm -hmm. around the whoever I'm shooting at. So if they move off, there's like a like a sort of outline of them yeah. on, on the wall. It's just like one of those comedy things. I just uh, so I quite enjoy playing them, but not very good at them. Um, and uh, so, uh, what have I been playing recently? Well, I've been doing a bit of uh, gaming on the old Vectrix because you know I love that. And uh, but the main thing I've been playing is something I said I wouldn't play. Again, it's sort of modern, but with a retro thing, and that's Mario Kart Tour. On the, I've been playing it on my iPad, but obviously it's available for all iOS and Android devices. And uh, said I wouldn't play it, didn't want to play it, but I uh, thought it couldn't be any good. Uh, but people at work have been telling me that it's good and it's worth checking out. And uh, one day, in a moment of boredom, <laughs> you installed it. I decided to download it and give it a go, and I've been addicted to it ever since. Now, as many people know, it's when those games it wants you to buy yeah, things, oh, you know, they got the buy old, coins, yeah, the old transactions, pay to win, which everybody that. hates. Um, but I don't find it's like overly. Then let it, that put you off then, no. you said to me, yeah. Yeah, I thought it would put me off, but no, it's, I find so far I've been able to keep going without actually having to spend any sort of money to buy more queens and stuff like that and stars. Um, I mean, it's just like, I mean, if you, if you want to sort of start cheating really, then if you want to cheat and get yourself further on quickly, uh, quicker. Or you've um, got access to your parents' credit card. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite expensive as well from what I've seen of the pricing on there for buying the extra things. But mm. like I say, so far I've managed to get, I've only been doing like the 50cc just to try yeah, it out. Yeah, you've got to start with that, start with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think some people say it's a bit frustrating because obviously you get like um, a certain amount of stars for doing a track, you know, it gives you like a, a rating, then not it? Oh, track, okay. And I've already done enough stars. Um, and to get five stars, and which you like to try and get five stars on everything, don't you, when you do mm. Mario Kart? But apparently you need to have certain... Cars oh, right, okay. So and you've got to well, you win possibly, them or you have to buy them. them, or buy yeah, them yeah, so, so they make it, yeah. Yeah, so it makes it harder to get five stars and everything. But to keep going through the levels and playing the different circuits sort of thing, I've not found it mm. particularly hard to do um, without actually spending any money. So mm. and uh, so, so far I've been really enjoying it. We were just so, playing it a minute ago. Yeah, yeah, I was just um, showing you. Wasn't I, the, Cooper yeah. Beach, it's great. Yeah, yeah it's got lots of great graphics. Uh, of course, a lot of the uh, circuits you'll recognise because they're from like the N64, the SNES, and the mm. NES. Um, uh, yeah, they've done a good job. It's, the, the tracks, you know, it's only like you do, it's, well, the tracks seem to be a little bit shorter than the actual tracks on other consoles. So, yeah. uh, and it's only two laps as well. So, they're trying to sort of keep it that you can just play it on the go and don't have to be sort of like stuck doing like a so many sort of eight laps or something rather yeah. than your just train's got in and get off yeah you just rainbow road or something yeah maybe it takes like a few minutes to do a, a race so yeah so yeah if you're not checked out yet um the, the sort of microtransactions bit it's been putting you off and 
Don't um, let it put you off. Basically. Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. Give it a go. And the controls are right, aren't they? Yeah, the controls are like okay. an arrow that kind of dictates where you. Yeah, heading. you just you just sort of like slide left or right where you you can do like your um, what they call it when you're skidding um, drift. Oh, sliding. You do, you do like yeah. your drifts around the corners mm-hmm. and stuff by holding sort of like left as you go, and it gives you like a little speed boost. Um, and also on the start line, if you hold down, press down on the screen when you get to like two oh, on the countdown, you do so speed far. boost as yeah. well. Oh, cool. um, and it's just, it accelerates for you, so you don't have to do any accelerate, it's just a matter of like going left or mm. right. And I think you can also do it so you can tilt your, your device to the steer as well, I think. so. But yeah, so I say, don't be put off, yeah. um, give it a go, it's definitely worth it. So now it's time to take a look at upcoming events. Now there's not much on in December, because everyone's busy shopping yeah. and wrapping up Christmas presents, but we've also included some events that are confirmed for 2020. So this month we've got a couple of events to tell you about for December, and then we're going to be telling you what's been confirmed so far for next year. So first up, this December we've got an event that's being held for you in Walsall. This is a retro gaming night at the Victoria, Lower Russell Street in Walsall. And it's being held on the 2nd of December. It starts at 8 o'clock, finishes at 11. And you can get more information on this event by going to www.retrogamingnight.co.uk. Now next up we've got a place that I cannot wait to go to, it's the Centre for Computing History in Cambridge. They're having a retro gaming night but it's the Christmas edition and it's going to be held on Friday the 6th of December from 6 until 11. To find out more info get over to the computinghistory.org.uk website. Right, so that's it for December and this year, so we're moving on to 2020 and we're going to take a look at what events we know have been confirmed so far. First up, it's a swag meet. Yes, we like to go along to the Southwestern Mega Group meets and there's two being confirmed so far for next year. That's one on the 25th of January and one on the 30th of May. More information on these swag meets will no doubt be released very soon, so keep checking the swag website and Facebook group for more information. Now, if you're a fan of roundabouts, you're like Milton Keynes, and guess what? They've got a gaming market, and it's going to be held on Saturday, the 8th of February, at the Stationbury Leisure Centre. So far for next year, three Play Expo events have been confirmed. The first being in Margate, then this has been held on the 21st to the 23rd of February at the Margate Winter Gardens. But if you can't make it to Margate, there's Manchester on the 9th and 10th of May. That's the bank holiday weekend. And just in case Manchester's not far enough north for you, Play Expo Glasgow has also been confirmed. Once again, it's being held at the Brayhead Arena on the 13th and 14th of June. Now Revival is back, but instead of one big bash, it's going to be split into two slightly smaller ones. The first part is held over the 7th and the 8th of March, and part two will be on the 7th and the 8th of November. The organiser Craig has been in touch, and tickets for the first part are going to be available early December. So it's already looking like 2020 is going to be a bumper year for retro events and we say keep them coming. Yeah, definitely. It looks like it's going to be another great year. And uh, I know we said in uh, this month's What's On that the revival tickets for the first revival event of next year are going to be on sale during the first week of December. But I can actually confirm that they are on sale now. So if you want to get yourself along to the first revival event of next year, then go along and check out their website now. Anyway, that really is about it for this month's show in the James. And uh, we'd like to say thanks to all the new subscribers, to all of you that still continue to support the show and the channel. We really appreciate it. And of course, as always, if you commented on last month's show, your name will be scrolling across the bottom of the screen right now. Anyway, so that's it. Like I say, we'll see you again next month. But James, until then, what they got to do? Keep it retro, everyone. Yeah, well done to them. I obviously enjoy listening to that. I listen to it on YouTube. How do you listen to it? Uh, all, the, all the car. All the car. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. All the car. Couldn't be easier. Yes, yeah, so it's always on all your favourite podcasts, or sort of, uh, what do they call them? 
Podcast. <laughs> what do they call them? Podcast. <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's looking like it's going to be another busy year on the retro gaming scene. And uh, I don't know, we said in that little clip that <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, moving on, everyone's been talking about it, everyone's been playing it, so we thought we might as well take a look at our last <laughs> 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 Yeah, that's it.